Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. As, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the year, our theme of the year is Be Ye Steadfast. And so today we're going to look at being steadfast in the battle. Being steadfast in the battle. And that song we just sang fits in with this sermon so good because this world is not our home. We're in a battle right now. You know, the, the, one of the hymns says, work for the night is coming. Amen. Work. It's time to work right now. But we'll get our rest in heaven someday. Amen. We thank God for that. Ephesians chapter 6 is where we're looking in the Word of God this morning, being steadfast in the battle. We're going to start a reading of verse number 10, Ephesians 6, 10. And these verses ought to be familiar to you if you go to church very much or study, read the Word of God very much. I don't know, these verses really stand out. And uh, the Apostle Paul writes in verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. That verse is our memory verse for this month. And uh, great verse it is. Verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And we're going to stop right there, and we're going to talk this morning about being steadfast in the battle. We are in a spiritual war today. There's spiritual battles going on all around us. It's a spiritual war that we are in. This war began with Satan many, many years ago. And even before the Garden of Eden and before Adam and Eve, Satan tried to set himself up as God. And God had to kick him out of heaven and put him in his place and the battle began. And then when God created man and woman and then Satan tempted them in the garden, it was part of this battle. And the battle has gone on for thousands of years. And it continues to go on today. You need to be aware and you need to wake up to the fact that we are in a battle. You know, some of these battles, Satan wins. You know, Satan does win. I mean, with Adam and Eve, he won the battle. Amen. But I thank God that we know that God's going to win the war. Right? He may, he may win some battles. He may get, you know, get his way here and there. But in, in the end, we know, like they say, we've read the back of the book and we win. Amen. God will win the war. The illustration is given throughout Scripture of this battle that's going on. And I think one of the greatest illustrations that we can look at is the book of Job. Wow, what a book Job is. I'll be honest with you, when I was a young kid and I read through the book of Job, when I was a teenager, I read through the book of Job, I never really did understand it until I lived some life, you know what I mean? Until I got some life uh, behind me and some years and some struggles and some trials, and it's like every time I read the book of Job, it is more alive to me than ever before. Uh, When you go through trials and tragedy, go to the book of Job. Now, Satan came to God and said, you know, you've got this all sewn up and everything's okay. And what about your servant Job? And and God said, well, you can test him. And Satan said, okay, I want to test him and try him. And 
And, uh, and God said, it's okay. And he sent the trial and tested Job. And thank God he passed the test. Amen. Now, it wasn't easy for Job. And I would imagine that sometimes, if you read the book of Job, sometimes you'll see that Job wonders, is God really there anymore? Does he hear my prayer? Does he, you know, does he listen? But it was a trial and a terrible trial and, and, and problems and difficulties that Job went through. But it was part of the battle. And uh, in the end, Job stayed true to God and his word and God blessed him and after the trial was over. But, uh, you know, uh, during the trial, you have to, <laughs> you look and say, is this ever going to be over? Is there going to be light at the end of the tunnel? And God says, yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You must stay in there and keep on and not give up and have faith in God. We see that. But we need to prepare ourselves. God prepares us for the battles that's coming in life. You know, the, uh, the Boy Scouts always had that uh, motto of their thing, being prepared for whatever was coming. You know, the Christian needs to have that same type of thing as being prepared for the war and the battle that's taking place uh, in our lives and around us in the lives of others. So we need to be prepared. So I'm going to take these verses of Scripture and break those down. We're going to look at each one this morning and get something I hope that's going to help you from God's holy word. Number one is this. First of all is the exhortation. The exhortation in verses 10 and 11. Let's read those again. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, as Paul is writing to this church in Ephesus, and uh, from all indications that we can find that uh, the, the church in Ephesus was a strong church, was a pretty good sized church. Ephesus was a, a seaport, a port where uh, they used a lot, and so there were a lot of people there. And by the way, the church at Ephesus is also addressed in the book of Revelation, one of the seven churches is the church at Ephesus. And uh, he talks to them in that, at that time. But here Paul is writing to them, and he's, he's exhorting them to uh, stand fast in the Lord. He, he uh, gives, um, in the book of Ephesians, we find that uh, as Paul is talking, there's some great verses in this book of the Bible about uh, the, uh, some of the attacks upon the church and things that were coming their way. And and Paul admonishes them and exhorts them to stand for God. And here he comes to the end of the book here in chapter 6, the last chapter of this letter he's writing. And he says, finally, brother. In other words, I've said all of these things building up to this. Finally now, here's what we're going to talk about. My brethren, be strong in the Lord. He exhorts them to strength. Be strong, but how in verse number 10 there? Be strong in the Lord. He's not talking about going to the gym and working out. He's not talking about exercise of the physical body. He's saying be strong in the Lord. We find today it seems like so many people <clears throat> are so excited and so worried and so uh, uh, um, important to them to go to the gym and work out and keep their body in shape. But what about their spiritual need and what about their soul and their spirit? Amen. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need to be strong in the Lord is what he's talking about here. Go over to Ephesians chapter 3. Go over to chapter 3 and look at verses 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The power that worketh in us, that strength that we have in the Lord. And I'm going to tell you today, there's only, there's only a couple ways you can get that strength in the Lord. And that is being faithful to the house of God. Somebody say amen right there. Being faithful to the house of God. Hey, if you quit going to church, you're going to start losing your strength. You're going to start giving in to the devil and temptation. 
By staying in the Word of God. Amen? You've got to read and study and memorize the Word of God. How important the Word of God is. It's like our food every day. It's like our intake every day for our spirit and our soul to be strong in the Lord. We've got to have the Word of God. So know God and know the Word of God. And that really goes together because if you're going to know more about God, you've got to know more about His Word. This is what He left for us. This is what He wrote to us. Be strong in the Lord. He's admonishing us. And in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. And we're going to look at the whole armor here in a minute. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It's not just strength, but it's stamina to continue to stand. You cannot stand without this armor that he's talking about. Because you're going to get attacked. We're all going to get attacked. Amen. We're all going to get attacked by the, by the devil and by the flesh and by this world. And so if you're going to stand, you've got to pay attention to these things. You cannot stand without the armor. Notice there against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles there is speaking of uh, the lies of the devil. The Bible says he is the, the author of deception, but he's also the author of confusion. And we find today in our world today that Satan is attacking and Satan is lying to people and confusing people. People are confused today. What's right and what's wrong? Well, if you want to find what's right and what's wrong according to what God says, go to the Word of God. I just found an article, uh, I, you know, I could, I could give a bunch of things, but here's part of the confusion that just upsets me. Ohio, here's the article, Ohio legislature overrides governor to protect children. Thank the Lord. The Ohio Senate joined with the House to override Governor DeWine's veto of HB 68, which will now allow the state to protect protect gender-confused children. Notice, gender-confused? The devil's the author of confusion. Uh, There's no confusion there. They're making this up. The devil's making this up. Gender confused children from medical mutilation and protect females from having to compete against biological males in interscholastic sports. Come on, these things are just common sense. The SAFE Act, by the way, the SAFE Act was um, put together by a man that was voted in that is Uh, a Baptist pastor and he saw the need and he ran and he won. (laughs) The SAFE Act specifically bans physicians from administering mutilating puberty blocker hormone and hormone treatments and gender surgeries on children under 18. Why, Why do we even have to say this? The bill was combined with the Save Women's Sports Act to protect female sports by barring biological male athletes from competing on female sports teams in schools and in, uh, and in public and private colleges. The SAVE Act also codifies parental rights in the state by allowing parents to raise their, cho- allowing parents to raise their children. Isn't that a concept? Wow, hello. To raise their children in a manner consistent with the child's biological sex without interference from the courts. Hey, courts, stay out of my house. Amen. 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 You have no business in my house. At least 23 other states have enacted laws protecting women's sports and at least 22 other states have enacted laws protecting minors from mutilating surgeries. Why isn't it 50 states? I mean, what's wrong with us today? You talk about the Satan, the wiles. That's what he says here. The wiles of the devil. Why? It's crazy. It's it's unbelievable, just unbelievable lies that the devil tells. And yet I heard just recently of a church, a pastor friend of mine called them up to ask them, what do they believe? It was a Methodist church. What do you believe? And the guy was very, very excited about telling him 
how we accept everybody and we're okay with same-sex marriage and, and we're okay with transgender and da, da, da. Why didn't he tell them we believe the Bible? Why didn't he start with the Bible? Why? Because they've thrown the Bible out. And sad when churches are doing this today. We're losing our minds today. Why? Because of the attacks of the devil. Hey, listen. I hope to wake you up and to shock you in the place where you've got to be strong in the Lord. You just have to be. It's craziness out there. I mean, if you, if you don't get strong in the Lord, you're going to be sucked in by this stuff. And you're just going to follow this stuff. And yet we see it more and more. Let's go on to verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Don't you feel like you're in a wrestling match sometimes? Did you ever get in a wrestling match? I remember in, my brother and I, we wrestled every night, right? Before we went to bed, we had to wrestle, you know. And uh, we got in trouble when we started wrestling my sister. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, we, would, we would wrestle, you know. And so then I got into, uh, got into, I don't know, it was grade seven or grade eight, and the gym teacher wanted us to wrestle, and I thought, yeah, I can wrestle, you know. And uh, the, first, the first match I got into was this, Big redheaded kid, and he was mean, man. He had a mean face and a mean look, you know. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be, yeah. Those redheaded guys, you better watch out for. And and so I, you know, I was ready, and I, I was thinking, now what's going to happen here, you know? And 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 uh, so the guy said, go, and he came at me, and his shoulder hit me right in the nose. Bang, like that. Well, my eyes blurred, and I was trying to, you know, keep this guy off of me so I could get, get my eyes back and see what was going on. But my eyes were all watery, and my nose started bleeding. And, and man, he threw me down, and I'm like, Let's just let me get my sense back here, you know. And uh, it ended up he won the wrestling match, but I got blood all over his white T-shirt. I walked away like, <laughs> that's my blood, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the next time I was more prepared, you know, and I beat the guy. So anyhow, um, here it is, the wiles of the devil. Hey, we are wrestling against an enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wow, what an explanation here, right? We're not, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Turn over to 2 Corinthians. It's not too far away. Just back a few pages. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, 4, and 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. Here's what he says. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. It's not a physical wrestling match. It's a spiritual wrestling match, right? Look at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they're not of this earth, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wow, what a description of what we're wrestling against and what our warfare is all about. And so back here in Ephesians, he says it's, it's against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's Satan himself that we're in a battle with and he is the leader of his kingdom. Satan right now is trying to set up his kingdom on this earth. You know what Christ's kingdom is? Is all the saved people on this earth right now. That's Christ's kingdom. But Satan is trying to set up his kingdom. Uh, guess what? He's going to win a battle here. Because one of these days, God's going to have the trumpet to sound and we're going to be out of here. And for three and a half years, Satan is going to have his kingdom on this earth just for three and a half years. And then God's going to come and pour out his wrath 
And then, you know what? While we're in heaven, we're going to be preparing for a war. You know, people said, are there animals in heaven? Well, the Bible says we're going to come on horseback. Hey, you know, so where the horses come from? God makes them. God make, can make them animals anytime He wants to. You know what I mean? And the Bible says we are going to come back to this earth and Christ is going to set up His kingdom for a thousand years. I want to be part of that kingdom. Amen. I don't want to be part of Satan's because it's only going to last for a little while. It's temporary. It's a mess. And you don't want to be part of that. I want to be part of God's kingdom. Yep, Satan is, is the leader of this kingdom. Their motive is the eternal ruin of every person. And when I say every person, I mean every person. Satan not only wants to destroy all of God's people, he wants to destroy his people. Hey, he can set them up for a while, but hey, you know what it ends up? It ends up in destruction. You know what I mean? It ends up in a mess. And so Satan has nothing to promise his followers and the wicked and sinful of this world today. He has no promises for them. Where are the promises of Satan? No, Satan's going to end up in destruction and death and everybody that follows him. You know, you know what we have today? We have Satan worshipers. I just heard of, you know, we have that Bible club in a school. I've heard of the Satan worshipers trying to get into our public schools to have a study with the kids that are there. You know, hey, listen, you go ahead. That's your choice. But you're going to end up in destruction for eternity. That's where you're going to end up. But Satan wants to ruin every person. Just like Job. He, he said to God, he said, you know, let me, let me uh, send some trouble to Job. And God said, well, you can send all trouble. You can even touch his body, but you can't kill him. Why did God say you can't kill him? Because he wanted to kill Job. Uh, hey, listen, if you're saved here today, you know what Satan wants to do with you? He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. It's happened down through the centuries of time of those that stood on the word of God and those that preached the word of God. There have been times of persecution. This church in Ephesus, when we read what it talks about in the book of Revelation of this church in Ephesus, it talks about the terrible persecution that they were going through. And they were there at that time when Nero lined up his, uh, his uh, way with the, the burning bodies of God's people, uh, and, and he was burning them at a stake and, and lit up his way so he could ride his chariot through. It's persecution. I read recently of a woman by the name of Elizabeth. Elizabeth in the late 1600s, uh, she was a, a person of God. She went to the jails where they were taking in England. They were taking the preachers of the gospel and throwing them into prison. And she would go to prison every day and take them food and take them what they need. If, they're, if they're, some were injured or hurting or sick or whatever, she brought them. And she went to the jail every day. And the jailer got used to seeing her every day. And, and uh, then at her house, there was a gospel preacher that came through. And she put him up for the night and hid him away when they came to her door and said, uh, where is that preacher? We heard that he's here. And she said, uh, I don't know where he is. And they had, in the meantime, they had escaped over the back wall of, the, of her house and had fled. And, and she didn't know where they were. And they found out that she had harbored them and they took her and threw her in the prison where she was taking care of people. And a few days later, they burned her at the stake. Took her out, tied her up to the stake and lit the wood and the straw around her on fire, and they said, if you saw her face, you could tell she never felt the pain. She had a smile on her face. She was praising God as the, as the fire burnt her to death. Hey, listen, that's what the devil wants to do. Let's not be surprised. That's what the devil wants to do to God's people. But here's Satan's allies. Look at what it says here. It says, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That speaks of powerful demons that rule the heathen in our world today. 
against rulers of the darkness of this world. That's demons who have infiltrated the political structure of our society. And then it goes on to say spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the evil spirits of Satan who have affected the behavior of the individuals. <clears throat> we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against these things. Boy, what a battle we're in. That's, what, that's why he comes to these following verses. And he says here in verses, let's read verses 13 and 14. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So we saw in verse number 12, I didn't give the second point, I'm sorry, is the enemy. That's what we just talked about. We're going to go on to number three, and that is the equipment, all right? The equipment. That's starting in verses 13 and 14. Now I'm going to go into verse 14. I'm going to come back to verse 13 a little bit later. That's our memory verse. But I'm going to come back to that in a few moments. But here's the equipment. Now notice here in verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. That is talking about this large belt that they wore in that day around their waist that kind of held all the other equipment together. And the belt was the place where they hung weapons on that belt. The sword that they had had to have a sheath to put it in. And it, hang, it hung on that belt. It was a great big leather belt that went around the waist that held everything together. He says, as God's people, we, mu we must make sure that we have our loins girt about with truth. You know what holds everything else together? Is truth. Yeah. And the Bible says... Thy word is truth. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's the truth of the word of God. I'm so glad that we today, although there are people all around us that have no idea what truth is, that we have the truth of the word of God. Amen. That we can have this equipment about us holding everything else together. And then he goes on to say in verse number 14, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. This covers all the vital areas. That breastplate. Uh, you know, the devil, I mean, you know, if you're a, a police officer or something like that, or in the military or things like that, they teach you uh, to take the gun and try to shoot at the, at the midsection of a person. Why? You want to hit the heart. You want to stop them. And so the, the breastplate of righteousness, and by the way, it is not our righteousness. Our righteousness is like a t-shirt. Right? But we stand in his righteousness, which is strong armor, and it will protect us. Go over to 2 Corinthians again. 2 Corinthians, go to chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 21. You see that the breastplate covers all the vital areas uh, in our lives. I'm going to lose this jacket. It's warm in here this morning, so here we go. Sometimes whatever protects you can get a little hot, right? <laughs> All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, speaking of Christ, who knew no sin, that we might be made the what? The righteousness of God in him. And so when we talk about the breastplate of righteousness, we're not talking about our righteousness, we're talking about His righteousness. And when I stand before God, I thank God that the Lord has promised me I'm going to stand in His righteousness. Amen. Not try to make my own. Because, hey, if you try to go to heaven by your good works, you're going to fail. Right. You're not going to, good works will not get you into heaven. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I stand in his righteousness, taking on the breastplate of righteousness. Go to verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Feet shod, the Bible talks about, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, your feet are important when you're in a battle. You know, soldiers, the feet are important. You know, in, in some of the wars that we've had, civil war and, 
and world wars and all those type of things. There were, there were instances where uh, they would kill the enemy and go up to the enemy. And if they didn't have proper boots on, they would take the boots off of the one they killed. Why? Because your feet are important. If you're going to do God's work, if you're going to go out and do God's work, your feet are important. That's what you walk on. And I, I learned about that. Because for a little while, in between uh, ministries at one time, I worked at a shoe store. And that shoe store I worked at was, uh, you know, they, they, uh, their reputation was we can, we can fit any size of foot, you know, and, and that type of thing. And I learned how important the feet are to everybody, right? To everybody. It's important. And uh, what you wear in your feet, I, I have learned that recently when I had ankle problems that I had, you know, and, and trying, you know, I, man, I can hardly walk. I was having all kind of problem and, and uh, plantar fasciitis and all of that in my feet. And, and I uh, went down to a store. I'm trying to find something good to support my feet. And I found a pair of, I don't know what they are, shoes and boots, the things I wore around here for a while because I couldn't wear anything else, couldn't hardly walk. I put them things on, tied them up tight, supported my ankles and everything. And I got up and it was like a new person. I'm like, wow, look, I can walk, I'm fine, no pain. <clears throat> I put on other shoes, and like these, I'm wearing today, I put these on, and I can hardly walk. You know, feet are important. The Bible says, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why is the gospel talking about the feet? Because we are to take it to the world. Amen? Amen? And we've got to be able to go. So these things are important. Verse 16. Above all. Notice he says there, above all. Usually in the Bible, things are listed in priority from the first to the last. But Paul does a little different thing here. He talks about these other things, and then he says in verse 16, above all. Right in the middle of it here. <clears throat> above all, taking the shield of faith. Wow, how important the shield is. Wherewith we sh ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The faith. Uh, you know, this shield that they talk about was big enough to hide behind. I mean, it was a big shield. Now, we're talking about a little thing like that. Uh, that was used for something else. Taking the shield that you could hide behind. You could get behind that. They could put those shields together and it was like a wall. When they came up to the enemy. And, you know, the enemy was on their, uh, in their uh, 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 castle or whatever, and they were shooting down and all, and they would put those things together to go up to fight the battle. You know, I saw a picture. I, I, I was looking up <clears throat> the definition of a word. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, the picture was that it was like the uh, shields. When they got close to the wall, those soldiers would take their shields and put them over their heads, and lock them things together so it was like a roof protecting them. You know, the ones on top were trying to throw down rocks and shoot arrows and spears. And it was like a, a, a roof over the top so that they could get up to the wall and then be able to scale the wall as the, as the, uh, uh, their, uh, the other part of their army was shooting at those others and trying to knock them down. Then they could get up the wall and then they could take over and, and win the battle. These shields were so important for the defense uh, that they had. You know what our faith is? Our faith is like a shield. Do you have faith in God? Amen. How strong is your faith? <coughs> it takes faith to be saved, right? But it also takes faith to live the Christian life every day. Amen. Every day it takes faith. Above all, have faith in God. Trust God. I want to be known. I want to have a reputation as a person of faith. And I want my, if you're going to be known as a person of faith, your faith has to be strong. Because you go out there and people attack you and Satan attacks you, you've got to have strong faith. So take the shield of faith. And that's how we're going to stop Satan's darts coming at us. Verse 17 goes on to say, and take the helmet of salvation, of course, a helmet to protect the mind. The Bible says to think on things that are good and right and 
holy and all of those things to keep your mind. You've got to have a helmet on your head. Uh, look, if you don't have the proper helmet, you'll be like Goliath. Amen? Amen. Right between the eyes, right? And down you go. You need a helmet on your head, protecting your mind. What is your thought life like? How important that is. Now he says, in verse 17, he said, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is the only offensive weapon we have, is the sword of the Word of God. How do you fight back? All of these others are defensive, right? The helmet, the longer about, the breastplate of righteousness, all of these others are defensive. The only offensive weapon we have is God's holy word. Standing on God's word, preaching God's word, declaring God's word is the sword that goes forth. Oh, how we need the word of God in our lives. Let's go on. Point number four is this, the last one, the energy. The energy. Hey, you know, if you have all of these things, but you don't have any energy. It kind of reminds me of this, of David, when he tried on Saul's armor and all of those things. You know, it was, it was too big for him. It made him awkward. He wasn't used to fighting this way. And so he, you know, he said, uh, I, I can't use these things. I just got to go out there in the power of God. You know, that's it. And that's how David went forth. The energy that we have to have to do the work of God. Verse 18 says this. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. For all saints. Where do you get your energy? Through prayer. Praying always. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Praying all prayer and supplication. <clears throat> supplication is specific request for people and praying for others. And he says there, <coughs> excuse me, and watching thereunto <clears throat> with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Perseverance is determination in prayer. Hey, folks, listen to me. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't give up. Don't stop. Don't give up. When you give up, Satan wins. So don't give up. Keep on praying. Uh, per uh, persevere in prayer and go forward in prayer for all saints, praying for each other. Now, in closing, I want to go back to verse 13. Verse 13. Our memory verse for this month. Wherefore, take unto you... The whole armor of God. Now when he says that, you have a picture of what he's talking about. Take unto you the whole armor of God. Everything. That he may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now let me ask you a question. Are we in an evil day? Amen. Amen. Yes, we are. Absolutely. That he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all. Folks, when you've done all you can do, and you're wore out, and you're tired, and you're frustrated, and you're just about ready to quit, look at what he says <clears throat> at the end of that verse, to stand. When you're tired, and you're worn out, and ready to give up, what does he say? Keep on standing. Don't give up, and don't quit, don't quit on God, God knows what's going on, and God loves you, and He wants to help you if you'll let Him. Amen. He, wants to, he wants to undergird for you. He wants to encourage you. Get into His Word. Stay standing. Even when it seems like the devil's winning everything in your life, keep standing for Him. Keep standing for God, and don't give up on God. Let me ask you today, if you've been tired and worn out, <clears throat> that's one thing the devil wants to do if, uh, uh, to God's people today is wear them out. You ever feel like quitting and giving up? You ever feel like, why am, I, why am I doing this? Why am I? There is a reason. There is a purpose. And he says, having done all to stand, Amen. being steadfast in the battle. Amen. Don't quit. God is still there. Amen. Hey, are you prepared for war? Are you prepared? First of all, have you been saved? 
having been born again. If you're here today and you've never been saved, listen, you need to get saved today. Amen. Don't put that off. I mean, we're living in the last days, friend. I mean, what are you waiting for? Amen. Jesus loves you, went to the cross to save you, to give you eternal life. Come to Christ today and be born again. Don't leave this place without the Savior. Amen. Know that you're saved and born again. And then start putting on that armor. Christian, have you got that armor on? The devil attacking you? You feel like you're losing? Maybe you're missing some of this armor here. Get girded about. Get that armor. Take unto you, he says, the whole armor of God.